So with that, I give you Caroline and Jackie. Let me give a brief intro for both of them, and then I'll let you guys talk a little bit about yourselves. Uh, Jackie is the editor-in-chief of Rangefinder Mag for three years, worked at Photo District News for 27 years, and is the judge of 30 Rising Stars Contest and multiple WPPI print competitions. Caroline, who's my buddy, winner of the 30 Rising Stars in 2012, has been featured in Style Me Pretty, 100 Layer Cake, Green Wedding Shoes, and more. And she has an online workshop, Light and Love, a storytelling photography workshop, available now through SLR Lounge. SLR Lounge. So there's another mic, Jackie. I guess you can grab that. And since I'm closest to Caroline, I'll give her mine. Caroline, why don't you start and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi. So I guess a little bit about how I started. I was a physics major. And about after two years into it, I hated it. It's like, okay, this is not applicable. I'm not interested anymore. So I took... Um, a bunch of other classes and then in the end I decided that I would never graduate if I switched majors. So to finish my physics major I took an art minor and that's when I discovered photography, Photoshop and all that and web design. So I knew I loved something creative and what cracks me up still is when I was graduating undergrad my photography instructor was like, oh so what are you doing next? And I said, oh I'm going to grad school at UCLA for education. And he's like, you know, I teach um, What's that extension courses there? And you should totally come. You sh I'll let you audit my classes. I see so much potential in you. Like, just come to my classes. And I was like, I'm going to be a grad student. I don't have time for hobbies anymore. <laughs> so I declined it. And then um, went on to become a teacher, got married myself. And then that's when I discovered the world of wedding photography. Fell in love with it. Got a camera. Um, started off just shooting, like, coworkers' kids. And then my co-worker had a cousin who was getting married got engaged and then he basically became my portfolio and and my business started off really quickly I met Jackie like within the first year and here I am today me? Okay. hi I'm Jackie Tobin from Rangefinder um, can everyone hear me so I grew up with a dark room did all like black and white processing when I was a kid I always loved film and I was at, so I was a photographer like in college on the newspaper and everything. I really liked the photo, like photojournalism and documentary. And then I, um, I worked at Photo District News, which was my first job out of college. And I was there for 27 years. And I thought, okay, I'm going to die here. What else do I do? I loved it, but I needed to like move on. And an opportunity fell in my lap to do a wedding book. Uh, wedding photographers unveiled. So Jose Villa was on the cover of that book, and I met Elizabeth Messina and a lot of photographers that were really hot at that time. That was 2009, and then I moved over to Rangefinder. So like I met Carolyn at a Elizabeth Messina workshop in France. That was really great, and it's just so great to see like how far she's come and how well she's doing. And I love that she was a 30 rising star. So congrats. Okay, first question will be for Jackie. Um, tell us a little bit about the thirty right. Tell us a little bit about a, the thirty rising stars and behind the scenes. Sure. Like what the process is. So the thirty rising stars is it's a competition. It's an invite only. It's not a paid contest. We ask industry leaders like photo editors and bloggers and other photographers uh, to nominate people who have caught their eye, and so you. We reach out to you, you get an invite. You have to be shooting five years or less full-time weddings. And so there's no age requirement. It's about how long have you been shooting weddings because the whole point of it is to find emerging talent. And that, that talent is inspiring like the next generation and they're keeping the industry evolving with different styles and looks. So behind the scenes, we get about 200, 250 um, submissions that you upload. And then there's thir you submit 30 images, and then there's like staff of five judges who uh, go pour through it laboriously and then come out with 30. Okay, Caroline, talk about what goes into building a winning portfolio, whether it's for photo competitions or different uh, publications. Um, I think when you're building a portfolio in general, I think you should think about who your audience is and what you're trying to communicate to them. And... From there, that's where you can put together the story. I think it's a little bit different for 30 Rising Stars because they want kind of like a range of what 
you do so that it's not like one event. So like if you're putting right. together, say, a submission for a wedding blog, right? The, the purpose of that is the story of this wedding. So you're trying to put together like a whole day of that one event versus something like 30 Rising Stars, you're basically trying to tell your career. And so it would be snapshots from many different things. Well, we're looking for people to like, we want to find their signature voice. So out of those, those 30 images, out of those 30 images, we want to see, we can see several weddings or one wedding, but we want the signature voice to come through and see details and portraits and ceremony and reception, like everything from the day. But it's still the point is to see what your like what your voice is, and that carries through several weddings. And like Caroline said, through you know your whole career is being told in these thirty stories uh, images. <laughs> so when you were putting together your uh, submission for for them, about how long did that take you? I don't remember. It was so long ago, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it was really difficult because it's like how do I, you know, summarize my style, and I'm. I'm trying to think like what what are my signature photos and what what's like this one image that can tell like a lot of things about me, right? So in the end I think it's like it's basically your favorite images, the ones that when you think about your work, like when you picture scrolling through your Instagram feed or whatever, like what are the images that you remember seeing pop up? And those I would say that represents you. This question is for both of you. Uh, Jackie, you can um, start with it. What goes into making a great image? I always say, well, when I look at an image, like I, and I always say that I want to be punched in the stomach, <laughs> like a gut punch experience, because I want the image to take my breath away. I want to be really struck by it. You know, that involves like a great composition and tone and balance. And again, like, your vision in that image everyone's going to see something different in that image but i'm also looking for the photographer's like style again in that image but i feel like if i if i see an image and i just stop dead like that's a great image if i just don't have any feeling and i don't feel connected to it it can be a good image it can be great for your client but it's not great for the competitions or for you know if you want to get published or want to get on a blog that's like you have to approach that differently for me, like one thing that I keep in mind, and this, I think this is just kind of like applies generally, like people don't hire you for your skills. They hire you for your vision. Right. It's what you can see in your head. And so a great image starts with that vision first. What, what do you see yourself creating? Then it's putting all the pieces together to make that image happen now. So um, for me, the first step would probably be the lighting. Where do I get the right light to capture that mood? Then composition. And then after that, it's posing the subjects. Caroline, how does like recognition for you from 30 Rising Stars, all the other publications you've been at, how has that helped your career and how does that change your career trajectory? Because I know you're doing a lot more stuff than just weddings now. I think one of the important things that, so like most of us as photographers, we're artists, right? But the other side that we do have to equally balance is being a good business person. You have to sell yourself. If people don't know what you're doing, then you're not going to get any paid bookings for it, right? So for me, my goal is always like name recognition, getting my name out there to as many people and places as I can. Because you never know when someone who is needing your services happened to come by your name. And maybe that first time they saw your name in this magazine, they didn't need a photographer yet. But then they see it again in a second time. Then they see it on a wedding blog. And then, hey, look, maybe when they saw it posted on Facebook, just happened to be that time when they were their friend or themselves needed a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer, whatever you're, you're selling, right? So it's just about getting your name out there in as many places as you can to the right audience that you're looking for. So I feel like with 30 Rising Stars specifically, it's more industry related. So if you're looking more for um, like either teaching opportunities, workshop opportunities, um, things like that would be important to have your name known in the industry, right? Versus um, like wedding blogs may be more for consumers, more for potential clients. Can you talk a little bit about some of the other things that you're doing? Because I know you're known as Caroline Tran Wedding Photographer, but I know you do have some other interesting projects going on right now. I do. Um, so like one of the other things I love is boudoir. So I started like a separate line of just boudoir photography. And a lot of it was inspired by 
from my own experience, because I had a session done when before I got married, so in my mid-20s. And I thought, at that time, I thought it was an amazing experience. I felt so empowered. You know, I thought this is like a milestone in a woman's life, like when you become a wife. And, and to be honest, I also thought that was my peak. I thought, you know, this is going to be the thinnest I'll ever be, but I've been wedding dieting and, you know, this is the best I'll ever look. So, like, let's preserve this moment, right? And so two kids later um, and 10 years later, I did another one. Like, I just... I kind of just had like a epiphany that, you know what, like, okay, so I'm a mom of two, but I'm still young, right? Like, there's no need to be all um, matronly already. So I, I contacted my friend again, and I was like, let's do another session. Like, this time, there was no dieting. It was just on a whim. Like, I was like, what's your availability this week? I didn't go shopping for it or anything. It was just whatever I had, and we did a session, and it felt amazing. Like, I just... That moment of like, I don't care about what, you know, media says a woman should look like. I don't care what messages are out there. Like I'm at a place where I'm confident enough that I don't, that I'm just going to be me. And I wanted to give that feeling to other women just to show them that you're beautiful. It's not about being perfect. It's just about embracing who you are. And I think that inner confidence is what shines through and makes a woman really beautiful, right? And so that was something I started to do where, because prior to that, my boudoir was very targeted towards um, like bridal boudoir, people about to get married. But now it's like, no, like people in their like 50s and, you know, should be coming in for this and every year. (laughs) Yeah. So that's one of my other projects. The other one is I've always, like I said, I was a physics teacher or I don't think I said that this time, but I was a physics teacher before becoming a photographer and I love teaching. And so... Um, I'm just trying to find as many ways as I can to still fill that teaching void that I have, that love I have for teaching. So I was hosting workshops, and then it took a lot of time to plan that. So I um, collaborated with SLR Lounge, and they filmed, like, my workshop. And so then now that's available for download on their website. Yeah. Okay, another question for both of you. Um, We'll start with you, Jackie. Um, How have... How has... Wedding photography trends evolved in the last five years. That's really good. Should I use this? No, this? no, no. I'll oh. this to okay. Um, they've actually changed quite a bit. So I think like when Caroline was uh, being nominated for the 30 and we were trying to choose people's work back then, it was very, like at the height of that lifestyle look and very light and airy. I mean, what I like about Caroline's work is that she still has that look because that's her signature voice and she's maintained that, but she still evolved her style. But back then they were like lifestyle. Um, people were doing some more like high fashion wedding shoots. We didn't see as much uh, wedding like documentary anymore, but this year we saw so much like photo J and raw, like gritty weddings. Like Jean Carlo was one of the people that just springs to mind. And, and we also saw a lot of like dark, more moody, atmospheric shots. And one thing I really loved is that we saw more of the whole wedding day. Like a lot of children, they were everywhere. And capturing other people just besides the bride and groom. And, and in a more candid way. Um, you know, we had a mix, I think, half film shooters and half digital. Which I always like to see more film shooters uh, submit work to us. So I think... Uh, Again, and also in the details, we saw more unique ways of doing details. Because I feel like, you know, it's great to hang a a dress on a tree, but, like, how can you make that shot look more interesting or come up with something out of the box? You can show the details in more unique ways. So we started seeing that. Just more innovative ways to show the same thing. I feel like, like Jackie says, like, there's still a consistency in the voice, but obviously, like, the, my, the medium has changed for me. I started off all digital, and when I first started off, I was trying everything. Like, I even tried, um, like, there was a time where, like, light writing was really in. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Yeah, painting. yeah, they're, yes. like, light painting, so I, I, you know, did a session of that. Um, there was a time where, like, the over, like, textures, like, processing with textures was in. Right. Um, I did some of that in the beginning. Luckily, most of it happened all within my first year. <laughs> and then after that, um, then I felt like there was a trend towards like processing to 
look like film. And then, which went away from the oversaturated one to like almost like a faded, like someone peed on the photo. <laughs> look. I did see a lot of that over the years. <laughs> and then, um, I feel like now it's back to well. I mean, I guess it's because it's current. It's hard. It's hard to look. Um, it's not like I'm looking back at it now, but I feel like now it's like an like neutral again. Like it's not overly right. processed. I think with film coming back in style, it's kind of making like the more natural look come back again, um, and away from like the fake vintage look. But yeah. What are some of the best and worst trends in the industry? Um, I think one of the best trends would be the film photography. Okay. Because it, I feel like it kind of um, pushed the processing trend back to a neutral point. The look of like real, like you're shooting a real wedding, make it look like a real wedding. You know, I think that at a certain point it became more artificial and st so stylized that we would see submissions and say, we're not... We're kicking you out because this, these are not real people. They're models, but they weren't models. It's okay to look beautiful. Like, you could have a beautiful bride, but just like tap into their personality. So that was one big thing we were seeing, like very artificial, highly stylized yeah. looks. And you think the industry is going away from that now? Yes, and just more natural again. Um, and I think part of that, like Caroline said, is using film and not like something that's pretending to be film, you know, <laughs> like a digital. Yeah, but no, uh, I think Jackie brings set. up a good point too in terms of worst trends is a few years ago um like highly stylized shoot became a trend okay. where people were like bringing a table into the middle of the field with no point and um like yeah there was no story to it but i think the trend has gone away from that because real brides don't connect to that because when you look at it, it just doesn't look like anything realistic and there's no emotions behind there right, right there was also see now my brain is yeah. churning no, because also, I wouldn't say it's the worst trend, but, like, we just kept seeing bride and groom, bride and groom, bride and groom, and I felt bad for these people. Like, nobody came to their wedding, <laughs> but that wasn't true. It's just you, that photographers were not capturing any other moments. You're storytellers. Like, you want to capture the whole day. Sometimes there are several days to a wedding event. So, you know, so I just feel like that was kind of weird. It almost, you know, it's just like bride and groom, very isolated, um, also, I think I don't love the mini couples in the grand sweeping landscape. You know, Marcus Bell did it well, and everybody tried to imitate that, and that they look like dolls. So that I would say was like a not so great trend. <laughs> <laughs> so with the thirty thirty rising stars, um, like I noticed the whole moody editing. Are you still open to like the light and airy? Oh yeah, sessions? no, that's a great question because I don't want people to think that we're promoting only one kind of look. It's just what we saw a lot of. But that, yeah, I love that light and airy look. Um, clean, more simple. I feel like we had a good mix this year. So you don't have to do all those like crazy atmospheric things. And people perched on cliffs where I don't even know how they got up there. That was another <laughs> trend. Caroline, um, how do we, one thing I forgot to ask you is how do we find out a little bit more about this, uh, this digital workshop that you're offering? Talk a little bit about the course. Okay. So in the course, um, it, it's called Light and Love, but you can go to propelworkshops.com. That, that's like my general workshop website. Um, but it's, I cover everything from business, uh, marketing, to how I shoot. We go on three, three live shoots together, and it's filmed. And film choices, uh, lighting choices, and like troubleshooting as we're going through the shoot. Yeah. Are there things not happening in the wedding industry that you would like to see start happening? Like trends that you want to see happen? Right. Um, like I like where we're at now because when I started at like PDN, nobody wanted to admit they were wedding photographers. That, that was in the 80s because I'm old. And so uh, people like uh, John Dolan and Dennis Reggie, I don't know if you even know those names, but like they were very... Um, you know, prolific shooting photo J style weddings and film and documentaries. So like, I really love that look and it's coming back more because again, that is like in the moment, fly in the wall, you're capturing everything authentically, capturing all the emotions. I just want to see the real emotions. I don't, I don't, you know, that's what I'd like to see more of. And I think that is coming back a lot now, more and more. 
I like that, um, like, one trend that I'm starting to see and want it to continue going is I felt like the wedding trend was getting to a point where people, where couples were overly focused on the look of the wedding and less about being in the moment. Like, I felt like I, I had, there was a, a certain year where I had a lot of couples who I just felt like they were overly stressed about the production of it. And they, um, to the point where, like, they weren't stopping to enjoy the moment, right? And so I feel like now, like you're seeing, like you mentioned, like pictures where there's guests in the pictures again. Um, right. There's context to it, and it's not just a styled magazine shoot now. Okay, she asked if I could talk a little bit more about my transition from digital to film. It was a slow transition. So it's um, when I first learned in college, I actually learned on film, and then I stopped and forgot everything about it. And so when I started again, it was digital. And then in my first year, I'm like, what I'm grateful for is in that first year, I tried everything and hard and fast. You know, I went right into it and every bit of it I tried just to find myself, right? And I recommend if you're starting out, that's like the best advice I can give you. Risk is so low at that point. You really have nothing to lose, right? Like you're, you're barely climbing that ladder. So if you fall down, it's okay. You can still get back up, right? So try everything. And that's kind of how I was able to find um, and realize that the look that I really liked was actually film. So I invested in like two workshops in that year. Um, and so I felt, I felt very fortunate that because I was able to find that path really early in my career, I was able to take off like um, quickly because of that. And so, um, and the way I started transitioning was I just started doing one roll of film per engagement session. You know, just to, and at that time I was double shooting, so like digital film, digital film, just because I wasn't confident yet, right? Um, and then eventually, you know, the film started to come back, and it's like, oh, it actually looks good. Like, and then I started trusting my settings more. And then, okay, let's drop the digital, and then let's go film on the port on the engagement sessions, and then slowly incorporating that into weddings. Uh, the question is, if do I feel transitioning into film made me better shooting digitally? Um, yes and no. Shooting film makes me, I'm a, I'm a very concise uh, film shooter. Like, or I think so. Like if I do a portrait session, it's six rolls of 120. And like a wedding, I can do like 15 or something like that, right? I mean, I, I shoot hybrid though. But I don't have very many duplicates and I keep majority of the shots that I take. Just because every click is like money, right? So if something's not right in the frame, I'm immediately fixing it already. If I, if I can tell I'm going to be getting lens flare in this, like, let's fix that. Um, if there's something in the background I don't like, let's fix that. You know, if, they're, um, if the couple is not comfortable yet, then let me stop and, you know, connect with them again before we start up again. Um, if I shoot digitally, I will admit that I have a tendency to be trigger happy. I don't know why, just because I... <laughs> yeah because I can and so I just click and okay and just to and I when I shoot digitally I tend to think I think out loud and so yeah maybe if I just tape the back I don't know but yeah so so I will admit when I shoot digital I am lazy still and in the sense that um, I just keep so I guess lazy is not the right word I get I just get trigger happy my finger just keeps clicking <laughs> his question is if do I feel that by shooting film do I get to connect with the couple more because I'm shooting at a slower pace? Yeah. I mean, even when I'm shooting digitally, I'm still talking to them the whole time. But for some reason, I'm talking to them while this finger keeps clicking and it really needs to stop. <laughs> but with film, like, you know, when you stop to load the film, like, that's a good time to connect with them. Um, what I do like about, I pace myself better when I shoot film because, um, because I'm in a portrait session, I'm used to what I need to get through per roll. And I kind of have, like, um, like a flow going. So I'll know like by the end of this role, I have to have like these many different varieties done. And so I have a, I'm able to pace myself better in that way. So in between while I'm changing roles, I'm able to think, I'm able to stop and think like, okay, what have I done already? What do I still need to do? And then what I like about it is that each role is almost like a, a paragraph for me. I get to come up with a new point. And so I like that. I like having that break. Whereas digital, I don't get that, um, those intentional breaks as much. Jackie, I have a question for you. You were mentioning earlier about the submissions and how you wish 
uh, you would see more more film. Are the majority of the submissions uh, strictly digital shooters? Uh, what would be the breakdown? And is there something in particular that you like about film? I mean, I think that this year we had maybe eight or ten film shooters, and the rest were digital. So uh, you know that was like what twenty more, and. Um, each year, it seems that the film shooters, the amount increases. But then there are a lot of people who are shooting both digital and film. You know, because I grew up, like, shooting film and processing it in a dark room. To me, like, that's photography. That's the art and the craft of photography. And there's something very, like, real and authentic about seeing a film print or an, an image. You know, so that's, like, where I, you know, that's, those are, that's my root. My roots are in film. Um, there's nothing wrong with digital, but, you know, I just, I feel like with film, when you're shooting film, you're taking more time to think about things, and you're seeing things differently, where with digital, like Caroline was saying, when you, you know, you're just, you're shooting more, maybe you're getting so many shots that, you know, it's just too many. I think film just makes you, like, stop and think a little more. Caroline, um, at what point did you feel confident just shooting? Like, I'm assuming your session, like your engagement sessions, are all film. Like, at what point did you feel confident just shooting um, film? And um, do you worry that like your film won't turn out at some point? I used to worry, and then that's where I was doing the like I would have two cameras, like the film and the digital, and I would do like most shoot uh, most shots twice. And then I think like after a few sessions when it would come back consistent. It's like, okay, then um, then I would slowly drop the digital. And, if, and I think even for a while, I was still shooting the digital as backup, but just never having to look at it, though. Like, But it was there in case I needed, and that kind of gave me security, and then eventually I was like, oh, I don't need it. It's good. 